So user research is a really important part of the product development process, but what actually is it and why is it important? In this video, I'm gonna dive into those two topics and I'm also gonna share an example as I go throughout this video of a fake company called Pomate and how you can actually run a user research project. So let's dive in. First, I wanna quickly cover why doing user research is important. Number one is that one of the worst mistakes that you can make as a product manager is making decisions based on your gut feeling about something. You always wanna have evidence that backs up your decision, whether it's raw data and quantitative data or insights, you want to have something backing the decisions that you're making as a product manager. And the reason is because you don't wanna waste resources. You have a limited number of engineering resources, design resources, et cetera, and you don't want to spend weeks or months working on a solution that may not actually solve any user needs. So doing research upfront is really important to de-risk the project that you're working on and the solution that you're considering so that when you do actually build it, it has the highest chance of actually succeeding with your user base. So what actually is user research? There's a number of different things that a product manager, researcher, designer, etc. could do to learn more about their users, their problems, their needs, their wants, etc. Things like running user surveys, so sending a set of questions, multiple choice, free response, etc. Doing user interviews, so talking one-on-one -on -one with a user to learn more about their preferences. You could do card sorts. You could run usability tests based on prototypes. There's a number of different methodologies and things that you could do within the world of research, ultimately with the goal of learning much more about your users and trying to build evidence for your decision-making process. Okay, so let's dive into this problem with Pomade. All right, so imagine that I'm a product manager for this app called Pomade. And Pomade is basically this app that connects dog owners and dog walkers. So uh, looking at uh, our Notion app right here, we can see that we have some initial data that basically demonstrates that a lot of feedback on the review platforms that we, we monitor on a, on a weekly basis are showing that users are dissatisfied with the way that they're communicating uh, with their dog walker. They are dissatisfied basically emailing back and forth. And this is happening pre-booking and during the booking. As a product manager here, I might have a hypothesis that it might make sense to integrate one-on-one -on -one type of live chat experience within the app. Um, and I may think that this will increase user satisfaction and engagement because we're giving a more direct, real-time way for dog owners to communicate with the dog walkers over instead of email, which is slow and annoying, etc. So the next thing that I might do as a product manager to start to research more into this space and learn more about this hypothesis is run a survey. So I put together a couple different questions here um, to basically just learn more about the experience. For example, how do you currently communicate with your dog walker? I want to understand like what is the breakdown right now? How satisfied are you with email as the way to communicate? If given a choice, would you prefer uh, something like SMS instead? How often are you facing difficulties when communicating with your dog walker? Would you prefer to have a different solution? How often do you need to communicate with the dog walker? And also which of the following methods would you prefer? if given the choice. So I might run this user survey with uh, a number of different users on our platform, maybe a couple hundred, so that I can get enough of a sample size to really get a sense of how our users feel about this problem. So let's take a quick look at the results. So say I ran this uh, survey and we see that 50% of our users are, are using email right now, 40% are using SMS, et cetera, but 70% are dissatisfied with email. So this is pretty consistent with what we're seeing on the review sites. Do they have a preference? for SMS over email. 80% would say yes. There's frequently experiencing difficulties with email. There's a preference for a better solution in general. We learn some more about the frequency of communication. And finally, what of the following communication methods would you prefer when really sharing a lot of different ways? So in-app chat actually only got 15%. SMS got 65%. Phone calls 10%, etc. So taking away from this research or from this initial survey that we did, we we might find that, you know, there's a preference towards SMS instead of live chat. And as a product manager, I might want to learn why is this the case? Why are people gravitating towards SMS over something like in-app chat, which is the original hypothesis? So I might want to run a user interview to talk directly one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face with our users to learn more about their preferences here. I put together this user interview script and questions. You know, I'm introducing myself as the product manager. Um, letting them know that we're exploring ways to improve communication between you and uh, the dog walkers and we'd love to hear your preferences etc and then i came up with a number 
of different questions to really dig in deep in this problem space to learn more. For example, why do you prefer using SMS for communication? Can you tell me about a time that you found SMS to be really convenient or easy to use, etc.? Um, so I'm gonna go through all of this. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to, you know, wrap it up and ask them if they have any additional comments about pomade. So then afterwards, I'm going to synthesize all the results. So I'll do, you know, maybe 10 user interviews. I will record all of them. And then I'll go back and re-watch all the recordings and write down interesting quotes, interesting responses that, that I'm hearing. And then I will categorize them. So for example, we might have a user said, I like SMS because it's straightforward. I don't have to fumble around and learn new features or interfaces. It's simple and it works. So the takeaway here might be that there's really no learning curve with using SMS. Next, with SMS, it's just quicker. I don't need to open another app, wait for it to load, and then send a message. It's instant. So speed might be the takeaway here. Next, sending pictures through SMS is really easy. I can instantly share them with my family. It's basically the most important thing to me to be able to see and send pics of my dog to my family. So being able to share photos and videos and content between your dog walker, yourself, and other people is really important. And they may not be able to get that easily in an in-app experience. So I'm going to continue to go through these different quotes and categorize them. And then I'm going to come up with some takeaways. So the takeaways here, users prefer SMS because there's no learning curve. It's really fast. It gives them the ability to share content really easily. People also like the ability to call the dog walker directly because they already have the phone number and have this text conversation going back and forth. And finally, they feel really safe with SMS. They think it's more secure, more personal way to communicate instead of going over this, this app. Now that we have learned all of that, what is the recommendation that we are going to provide as the product manager? Well, basically from the survey results and the user interviews that we did, we really invalidated the hypothesis that in-app chat would be a really great enhancement to the user experience. Instead, we should make it really easy for dog owners to be able to text via SMS with their dog walkers. That's gonna be a higher return on investment. So, okay, we have this recommendation now now, what experiments should we run? What actually, what features should we build to continue down this route? Because we do know still that it is a big problem. Users are dissatisfied with the way that they need to communicate with the dog walkers right now. So how should we actually solve that core problem? The solution should be geared around SMS because that's what we learned in the survey and the interviews. So there may be three recommendations that you come up with, or I come up with as a product manager. Number one, we could release the dog walkers contact information directly after after the booking confirmation. So once you pay and you book a time and date for the dog walker, uh, you'll be able to see their contact info. The next is you could provide a feature for the dog walker side of the application for them to introduce themselves and easily text with the dog owner. So this could be, you know, uh, an example would be creating a pre-written text and just having them send it off right to the dog owner right after the booking. And then the third could be as Palmate, the app, we automatically send a text after the booking confirmation information to the dog owner. And within that text, we actually include a contact card. That way they can easily tap on it, add it to their contact list, and then text the dog walker. So they have all the information like their name, uh, a link to their profile, etc. just already, you know, put into the their, their messages app on their phone. So that can make it really easy. So all these experiments are really centered around SMS and making it a lot easier for the dog owners to get in touch with the dog walkers. So going back to the top, originally we had this data that show that people were dissatisfied with email. And we had a hypothesis that if we build one-on-one -on -one real time live chat within the app, we would really help the user experience. Now, what if we had just gone ahead and told our engineers and designers to start working on this solution? That would end up being a massive waste of time. To build an in-app chat experience, it'll take a lot on the design side to make sure everything is accounted for and it's a seamless experience. On the engineering side, we're gonna either have to build it in-house, would be which would be a massive undertaking, or we'd have to integrate with a third party service, which also takes a lot of time. And it also is costly for the business. You know, every message and piece of content sent is going to cost more money for Palmate. Um, and so if we'd gone down this route, we may end up three or four months down the line with this in-app chat experience, and then no one ends up using it. And we could have simply just built a couple small features to encourage SMS chat, and we would have solved this core problem for the user. I hope this demonstrates to you at a high level why user research is actually important. It's a lightweight and easy way to start to de-risk the solutions that we're really considering. We want to think about the hypothesis that we have and then either validate or invalidate it through these different methodologies, whether it's surveys, interviews, card sources,
reports, usability tests, prototypes, etc. It's all in an effort to either invalidate or validate a hypothesis. One final tip that I have for you as a product manager is that if you're going to be doing re user research, go into it without strong biases. Really be open to learning actually what do the users want? Because at the end of the day, no, none of us can see into the future or see into the brains of our users. All we can do is start to gather more and more evidence, data, quotes, etc., from users to learn more about their preferences. Again, the worst thing that we can do as a product manager is to make a gut reaction and decision just based on what we think internally um, without really trying to validate that with real people in the real world with data, etc. So hopefully this video helped you understand why user research is important and what it actually is. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love if you could drop a like and subscribe to my channel and definitely check out other videos. I make a lot of product management content around interviewing, how to be a successful product manager, etc. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.